Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about reduced fetal movements and its management. Now reduced fetal movements is one of the common complaints pregnant women have, okay? And the catch here is most of the time it is alright. Sometimes the woman cannot assess uh, their fetal movements better. But again, you know, the reason can be different. Most of the time it is alright but there are some sinister diagnoses as well like stillbirth and compromise so it's important that we we address this issue very very promptly but not too much aggressively as well for example if a lady comes to you with the reduced fetal movements you just don't you know do aggressive treatments like starting you know medication doing the ultrasound back to back it's not like that that's where the algorithm comes okay because we need we need the studied studied uh, evidences that what we should do in these cases so this diagram actually going to help you what to do now let's see in reduced fetal movements after 28 weeks the most important thing here is to take history Many, many of the gynecologists and basically the students who are appearing for viva and everything, they, they forget to mention this thing very particularly. They do not put a pressure or they do not put a weightage on detailed history, okay? Because this is the most important part. This will decide the further management. So it is important that you take a full history from the patient that you know how many kicks you are feeling since how long you are not feeling well. I mean since how long you are thinking that you have the reduced fetal movements and uh, usually how many times your baby feels for you and you know it's like you have to take a detailed history of that along with that you need to ask about the risk factors for fetal growth restriction and stillbirth now the risk factors are there are many risk factors of stillbirth and you know reduced fetal growth those are like smoking primary pregnancy, preeclampsia, bleeding PV during the pregnancy, placenta previa, history of previous abruption of placenta, congenital anomalies. Many of these things are the risk factors for FGR or stillbirth. So we need to find out those risk factors, okay? Now, after the history, if it is confirmed that the reduced fetal movements is not there, it's just the perception of a woman. In that case, what you do? You just do a fetal heart. That means you need to listen to the fetal heart. The expert, expert clinician can do it with the stethoscope but you know it is required it is recommended that you do the fetal heart with the hand uh, hand held doppler okay so the doppler it's very simple device you can hear the sounds heart sounds you must be very sure that you are not hearing maternal heartbeats or maternal blood flows okay so you make sure that you also palpate the maternal pulse at the same time so you can differentiate between the both heartbeats and in the heart activities so if you find out that okay the heart rate is fine there is no problem then you can reassure the patient that okay everything is all right uh, just come again when you have this kind of feelings again okay so just just appear when you still feel you are having reduced fetal movements but otherwise it is okay the woman goes for the routine AMC assessment okay let's say if the woman is not sure then you can advise this technique to them that is do the focused focused you know um, uh, watchful for the fetal movements for two hours okay if you feel if you don't feel more than 10 fetal movements in that two hours then come back again because it is one of the sign okay but if you feel more than 10 fetal movements in two hours in the focused two hours then it's fine it should be all right follow the routine ANC guidelines now if the patients 
history confirms that okay patient is really having reduced fetal movements then you do the doppler okay what is the purpose of doing doppler here to identify the fetal heart either it is present or absent unfortunately in some cases it is absent that particularly means it can be most likely in dry or dry death which is not a good news okay which is really bad good news. i mean very, very bad news and you cannot confirm the iud just by doppler you have to do the ultrasound okay you have to make the confirmed diagnosis with ultrasound do the ultrasound and if you find the iud you then have to manage according to that you know you have to manage for the delivery you have to break the bread news uh, a lot of other things so iud is a different thing from here now let's say on ultrasound everything is fine everything is all right then it's fine then it's okay because sometimes fetal doppler is not able to pick the heartbeat that's okay ultrasound is the final and gold standard that you can see the half fetal heart by your eyes so yes if the fetal heart is not working good there is a problem but if it is normal everything seems normal fetal heartbeats are fine then again you can reassure the patient that okay everything looks fine don't worry okay it can be just for you know incidental incidental findings so don't worry about it you can go home but again if you feel this kind of complaints again you can always come back right now you also reassure them that if if they are not feeling you know comfortable or if, are, if they are not sure about their fetal heart uh, fetal activity again as i say do this activity 10 fetal movements more than 10 fetal movements in two hours that should be all right focused fetal counting okay now now if let's say here when you do the doppler when your history confirms the rfm and when you do the doppler and if the fetal heart is present then you you directly do not send patient to home right because there is some problem okay why because fetal heart is present fetal is live fetus is live but then why there is a reduced fetal movement you need to see the fetal you know a fetal well-being so something called fetal well-being so for that you need to do ctg cardio topography okay why because you want to see the comp if there is any fetal compromise or not if there is a fetal compromise we have to think about delivery and further option admitting the patient but again here you have to do the ctg here so the ctg's role comes when there is a fetal heart present but still the patient is having reduced fetal movements okay now in the ctg if you think that the, the ctg is suspicious or pathological then it is confirmed that there is fetal compromise and in that case you have to manage according to the protocol you have to admit the patient you have to see the gestational age and you have to see how you, you can prevent this thing and again it's again another protocol but yes here we need to manage it very very aggressively yes there is some problem there is confirmed some problem that we need to take the action now now if the ctg is normal which is good news if it is normal then it's fine then you can ask the lady again that okay if you still feel the reduced fetal movements you still feel if she says no my problem is resolved because you know sometimes the psychological factors can also work if the woman says that everything is fine on the fetal heart and everything is fine on the ctg uh, there is no problem examination is all right then the ladies tend to uh, have a reassurance and that affects psychologically and sometimes their complaints resolved that is good news then just reassure the patient and she can go home but if even after ctg even after the ctg is normal and even if this lady is still saying that okay my complaints are not resolved then you go for the ultrasound and what you will see on the ultrasound you will see the amniotic fluid volume you will see fetal biometry 
Some patients, so, sorry, some doctors want to do the BPP biophysical profile, although the study says it is not that accurate to diagnose any fetal compromise, but you know, some, some of the clinicians do BPP as well. But on the USG, if everything is all right, if the CTG is all right, then you have to counsel the lady that, okay, look, everything is all right, everything is fine, you have to uh, see things.